What is up everybody, this is Tyler 7 200 of Playing News, and today I'm going to be talking about my studio setup. Okay, well, I gotta say a couple things. First off, there is a huge mess, and I think that's very clear, so I'm gonna be cleaning that later on tomorrow. But I just wanna get over some of the interesting stuff I got going on for the studio setup. So, first, I'm just gonna talk about a little bit about the computer lab section over here, as well as uh, just set this stuff up real quickly. Okay, there we go. So right here, this is the computer lab area. As you can see, I've got this computer I replaced. This computer is my Dell Dimension 3000. Although it wasn't a bad machine, it worked fine for what I used it for. It just went, whoa, I got low battery. I never even realized it until right now. Anyhow, this machine worked fine for a little bit. I just put it out of commission. The reason why I put it out of commission is because it didn't have a AGP or PCIe slot in it. So I couldn't use the graphics card that I wanted to use to do something special with. So instead, I decided to get a whole new computer upgrade, and I went with this Dell Optiplex GX2620. This was the uh, guest room computer. I just essentially brought it down here because it has a little bit more oomph than this thing does. Essentially, it has a Pentium 4 Prescott at 3 GHz. It's not the original machine. This thing was completely stock rebuilt uh, because all the stock parts were completely drained out of it. This thing was being used for parts. And I completely rebuilt it, and I just, you know, completely built it from scratch, and it works fine now. And it's running Windows 7 Ultimate, and these two machines right here, these Dell Duplex GX270s, work fine too, as you can see, they do boot. What the hell? That was really weird. Keyboard failure. Anyhow... They look like they have Vista on them, but I can guarantee you that is Windows 7. It's just that uh, since these machines have such shitty graphics, that they have to actually boot into low resolution mode, which basically displays the little Microsoft Corporation logo. But as you can see, they are Windows 7. Just proof there. These machines work just fine. They're nothing really special, although this machine is packing a little bit more oomph. And I'll show you what I mean. So right there, as you can see, I got a pinnacle box and a couple other stuff, but uh, I'll get it to more back to that later. So what I've got going on for the studio is, as you can see, I just got a chair right there. I've got a little black, I just got a little screen, although you might be wondering, why isn't it green screen? Well, I don't really do too much with green screen stuff. And Pinnacle Studio allows me to change the color of the alpha channel. So if I wanted to, I could still use this as a green screen. It'd just be kind of weird because it wouldn't work as good. And I've actually got this really wired, pretty shitty, but this is my American DJ BL4 can. Um, little studio light. As you can see, there's two light bulbs missing in the middle. I only needed two light bulbs, nothing more brighter. And they're just halogen bulbs. They're not really they're the little incandescent style looking halogen bulbs. And you might be wondering, well, why didn't I use spotlights? Well, spotlights for these things are very expensive, and I don't have the money for that. So I just put those in there. And as you can see, it's providing good light, as well as they're wired into the system, so... Whoa, my camera's not focusing. Hold on. This handy cam has a bad habit of that. So I can actually dim these, make them brighter, you know? And that light's still connected, but who knows? So as you can see, I dim them and make them brighter. For the camera, I've got a Panasonic AG195. This is a pretty one in pretty bad shape. This thing has been through hell and back. As you can see, it is missing a shotgun mic. The camera works fine on it, but the video compartment is completely destroyed. It will still, it will actually still record off of tapes if you put them in a certain way, but the video head is just completely destroyed. You can just touch that. I really don't care. It's just completely destroyed. It's gone. It's trash. 
So essentially this video, this whole camera here is destroyed, the whole VHS compartment. It still kind of pops out here. It's supposed to. You still kind of pull it out. But it's completely destroyed. So, essentially I have a little composite output right here if you wanted to hook up a TV. And then this cable runs down around here to the pinnacle box. Which then the pinnacle box is connected to this computer right here, which is the main and most powerful computer in the computer lab. Also, I've got a TV up there. I don't have my remote, my fancy universal remote. I'll go ahead and turn it on. You might also notice that uh, it's, it's a CRT TV, so it takes a little bit to warm on, to warm up. But as you can see, not only do I have cable, but if I click this, front ports which have nothing in them, and ta-da! You might not even know what that is, but if I just show you here, let's say I take device manager, or this is just services, I can drag it up to here. It's obviously not a very res good resolution, but it works. This TV, now all standard definition TVs go to resolution of 640 by 480, so I'm definitely pushing this quite a bit by setting it to 800 by 600. It's not supposed to be pushed that hard, but it is actually running at the resolution at a very poor refresh rate, and as you can tell, there's a lot of uh, crap on there. Oh, that's just paint left over, but as you can see, the, the pixel density there is just is demolished. So it's not really fully accepting that video format. And actually, if I pull this up here, whoops, that's on the other screen. Uh, right here, as you can see, this is the input coming off the pinnacle box. As you can see, that is a live video feed of over here. See, I'm gonna move the camera. Moves it, I have to kind of center it. So this video input is coming directly off the camera because I can't use, I can't use the, um, the VCR in here, it's completely destroyed. So, essentially I'm gonna have a video mixer running to there. And I wanna have two of these cameras, one over there, one over here, one over here, one over there, and uh, one zoomed in maybe or something, I don't know. We'd have to do something like that. I'll do it eventually, but for right now this seems to work just fine. And obviously you can see that is a good output. Now, not only, they might be wondering, well, what's the whole point of the TV? Well, since this is a computer lab, it's meant to present stuff, we're also, didn't know you could use it as a preview which is pretty nice actually pretty nice feature to have now you might be wondering well what, what about the mic the mic on the camera is gone so what do i use for a shotgun mic well i got a little lapel mic on me that i have wired on me and there's a wireless receiver back there you simply change it to channel one and i got the other i got the transmitter in my pocket here go ahead and set this to channel one and the video comes to live that's just plugged into the microphone port on the computer. And now if you notice if I talk into it, or maybe not, is this hooked on? Okay. It, the level should be smashing. I don't know why it's not doing anything. Oh. Hello? There we go, the mic kind of came out of there. As you can see, if I talk into it, the levels kind of get high. It looks like the levels are smashing right now, but believe it or not, they're not distorting. Although I should probably pull this mic a little bit further away. So, well, wrong way. So I'll give you a little test demonstration of this. All right, so now I'm gonna be showing you a little bit of a, ooh, the volume levels are kind of smashing. So let me try to move my mic down here. All right, so you might notice that the video sound is kind of clipping a little bit and that, I actually did the first part and I screwed up because the video volume is too intense. So essentially what I'm doing now is I'm actually uh, talking a little bit quieter and I've turned down the microphone boost or the gain on the mic to essentially help out with that issue. As you can see, I, I don't really see it clipping right now so that's a good sign, but it is definitely getting up there in volume. So as you might notice, the video quality is not terribly bad, despite it being a VHS camera. You might notice that the video is kind of fuzzy. That is not the um, camera's fault. That is the cables that I'm using. I'm using some pretty shoddy cables that I splice and diced, and I am going to be getting some much better cables soon. So don't even worry about it being like this. This is just temporary. I'm going to be getting some pretty nice cables. Like I'm talking about maybe some, um, some coax cables for the... And I have some adapters that allow you to go from uh, coax to components. And I'll be able to do that for the video input. That way the video input sounds so good. 
you won't have to deal with this anymore. And essentially, as you can tell, it does, it just sounds pretty good actually, it's working pretty good, and that's nice, you know, you don't commonly get this. Uh, the microphone that I'm using, the lav mic, is a really, really crappy lav mic. It's really crappy, and so you might notice the video, the sound quality is pretty bad. So if it's clipping and doing all sorts of stupid stuff, you know why. It's the sound quality of the mic. It, it needs to be repaired. Like, see, if I hold it directly to my face, it's probably clipping and doing all sorts of stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, that had to clip that time. Um... But yeah, essentially that's how this works. It's pretty nice. I this is I the video computer over there that I'm capturing this off of is not going to be the main computer for video editing. I'm going to have it networked. So all the capture files that are being captured right off here go directly to the file server down the hallway into the server room and essentially I could actually um retrieve the files on my laptop and edit them that way. I also do plan about doing some fun stuff with this. As a matter of fact, I might do a live stream on YouTube sometime. But of course, I gotta assemble some chat moderators and some people to make sure I'm not gonna get swatted and that stuff because I've seen it happen to a couple of people and it's pretty bad. So essentially, I'm gonna maybe I might even do like a, a live stream through this studio sometime. I could do a live stream. I could do a lot of things actually. It'd be a very interesting project to do. And essentially, it'd be a very interesting project to do, and I could probably do it pretty nicely. So anyhow, thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.